scary Yeah, I got a face that should be featured up in Mary Claire I put the song on play and it's very there There's only one me and I'm very rare I tell them own it just like Oprah, I ain't playing no controller Okay, yeah, I got the gas, but no, you can keep the motor I pull up with the show, put, put, put me on a poster No, put me in the spotlight, let me get that good exposure Lip gloss is popping, my J-Star real cute Got all this ice, you can count each cube All these diamonds, I call that a clear view You can see me coming, windshield or the rear view Welcome to Emerald Live Educational Series. This is our fifth one of the series. So exciting. I'm Bill Cohen, the Managing Director of Emerald Live. I hope you were able to enjoy some of the video. I heard there was a little bit of sound issue. I apologize for that. That was um, one of the famous videos by Laganja Stranja, one of our guests today. Um, so today we'll be discussing sex and cannabis. Cannabis and sex have been deeply intertwined throughout history, from an ancient Chinese aphrodisiac to the free-loving hippies and back to its historical roots as a medicine. There is very little research on cannabis and sex, and the reports that exist are heavily biased and often conflicting. About one-third of U.S. women have used marijuana before sex, and those who do report increased desire and better orgasms. Does cannabis do more than make a good thing better? Does cannabis maintain healthy sexual relationships? It's time to separate myth and conjecture from what we really do and don't know about cannabis and sex. Before we get started, I would like to thank our partners, Last Prisoner Project, Tokativity, Pro Cannabis Media, Tribe Tokes Luxury CBD, Theramu CBD Isolate, Garden State Normal, and Heady, New Jersey. I encourage you all to maximize your networking experience by pasting your LinkedIn profile, Instagram handle, and any information that you would like to share in the chat room. To ask questions, please put them in the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. Next up is our industry news by Jimmy Young, founder of Pro Cannabis News, and then a word from our Emerald CEO, Christina DeGiovanni. Jimmy? Hey, thank you very much, Jill. Appreciate it. I am Jimmy Young, the founder of Pro Cannabis Media. And I'm here with a few news items. We'll call it foreplay for today's webinar. In case you don't know, uh, we produce five shows on the cannabis industry, including six hours now every week of live cannabis chat on our new Twitch channel. Now, some people think I'm crazy to do this, but as a former sportscaster in New England, I embrace the craziness and ask you that you check us out on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv, Pro Cannabis Media. Now the news headlines from the past month and this past week. Two states have opened up their medical marijuana operations, Missouri and Virginia. That brings the total of 35 states that now have a medicinal marijuana program in the United States. Now Vermont became the first state in the country to legalize adult use of cannabis through the legislative process instead of the ballot box. And just in case you hadn't heard, there's a pretty big election coming up in two weeks, and there's definitely a pro-cannabis ticket and an anti-cannabis platform. No matter which side, however, that you might prefer, we ask you all who are eligible to please vote and exercise that right. Now, there are five states who will be deciding their adult use legalization future. One is New Jersey, where recent polling has that initiative passing by a three to one margin. Other states are South Dakota, Mississippi, Arizona, and Montana. Now, a current POTUS appointed federal prosecutor named Kurt Almay from Montana is now urging his state to consider the risks of legalizing cannabis in Montana. He brings up many of the old standby arguments by prohibitionists, such as the potential for increased car accidents and children harmed by the potentials of using cannabis as a gateway to harder drugs. Now, all of these age old arguments have been refuted by science, research, and the experiences of Colorado and Washington State. Meanwhile, a top advisor to New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says legalization of adult use cannabis will once again 
be introduced to the state budget in January of 2021. The goal is to have an adult use cannabis reform program ready to go by April of 2021. Now, in some international cannabis news, results are still being tabulated in New Zealand, where that country voted on legalization over the past weekend. In Europe, however, Italy has recently classified CBD as a narcotic. Now, there's a bit of an issue in that country because a member of the agriculture ministry allows hemp for extraction uses and classifies that plant as an agricultural product, not a drug. Hmm. On top of this confusion is the fact that the drug Epidiolox for epilepsy is coming into Italy. So the USA isn't the only country still trying to figure out the benefits of the plant medicine and who's in charge of it. One more story to share with you, and it's about the arrest rate for cannabis offenses in the United States. Yes, they decreased year over year from 2018 to 2019. However, there were still 565,000 602 arrests for cannabis last year, with just over 500,000 of those arrests for cannabis possession. Amazingly, those arrests were more than the 495,871 arrested for violent crimes last year. Police continue to target people of color for a disproportionate percentage of those arrests. It's a whole new world of weed out there, everybody, but we still have a long way to go. For the Emerald Media Group, I'm Jimmy Young from Pro Cannabis Media. Thank you so much, Jimmy. I love your news reports. And thank you everyone for joining us today. I am very excited for this panel that we have today that discusses sex and cannabis. Um, I first want to start off by talking about an initiative that Emerald Media is now doing with my bud base. It is called Walk the Walk. It is a collaborative in which we invite all of you to join us along this journey and not just talking the talk, but actually walking the walk with us. We feature a minority founded business every month and we share our resources and insight with this industry to help see these companies grow and succeed. Now, without further ado, I want to introduce you to today's moderator, Laura Hamilton. She's fabulous, and she is the founder of Women, Sex, and Cannabis. She proudly advocates for cannabis and women's sexual health. Her mission is to get women talking about their libido issues and menopause, and she's on a quest to get women orgasming thanks to cannabis. And without further ado, Laura, please take the stage. Why, thank you. Thank you. Um, I Hopefully I've unmuted myself correctly this time. <laughs> yes, I'm very excited to be here because we are tackling two of my favorite topics. One of them is cannabis and the other one is satisfying your sexual life. And we've got an amazing panel today. Um, I'm going to introduce them and let them uh, tell their story. Um, I'm just uh, going to go down the list. Who's first up here is Kiana Reeves. And she's, uh, if you could just, you have the coolest title in your LinkedIn, Doula. Doula is the coolest name for anything ever. So why don't you take us away and tell us how you uh, have come to cannabis and how you're using it. Great. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, so I'm the chief education officer at Foria. Um, my entry into the cannabis industry was kind of through a side door. It wasn't something that I intentionally planned to do, but as you said, I'm a doula, which is someone who works with birth and my background is really in female sexual health and wellness. Um, I'm a somatic sex educator. I do full spectrum doula work, meaning I also work postpartum and with abortion and, and um, pregnancy loss. And I've always been fascinated with the world of sexual wellness. And so I was running my own company and I, I met Matthew, our CEO and founder, and it just was kind of like a magnetic match. And we really uh, work hand in hand to make our mission, not just about the products and not just about the cannabis plant and how magnificent 
all of the healing powers are, but also um, really around letting people tell their stories and allowing things that happen in the bedroom that people are very, you know, usually have a lot of shame around or a lot of privacy. Um, we are kind of dedicated to bringing that into the light and into the open. So that is what I do. And thanks for having me. Yes. Uh, and I have to say after 35, women stop talking about sex. Yeah. Well, they, they're not going to anymore. And this exactly. Is really, really <laughs> topic that we want to, we want to hit on is that, and I know we're in bios, but I just want to say about a third to a half of a woman's life happens after menopause. And so there is a whole large chunk that we don't speak to around sexuality. So. Very good. Okay. Uh, next up on my uh, list of fabulousness is Laganja Astranja. Uh, hello. Where are you, my dear? Yay. Hi. How are you? Uh, tell us about yourself. Well, I am most known for my appearance on RuPaul's Drag Race season six as Laganja Astranja. Um, since then, I have gone on to do many different projects. Uh, I have done more television, but I've also worked in the cannabis field, which I've really loved doing, especially since I am queer. Uh, I feel like there's a long lineage there of cannabis and queer. So I'm really proud to be representing that spectrum here today in the panel. And uh, yeah, I just discovered cannabis because I needed it. I had a back injury and that was all it took. You know, once I started medicating in that way, because I will be honest, I had totally, you know, smoked cannabis uh, recreationally. But once I really put it in the lens of uh, medicinal, you know, it just changed my life. And that's why I chose this platform as a drag queen, because I wanted to spread the message and, and break the stigma and show people that, you know, you can be successful uh, and still a stoner. So here it is. And I can't wait to talk about sex today. I'm all about it. That's what I'm known for. I love it. So uh, thanks for having me. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Okay. Uh, next up on my list of wonderfulness is, oh God, I'm going to butcher your name. I know it. Uh, Shanitria Anthony. Where are you, my dear? I can't see you. Hello? Yes, yes. Um, hi. I'm right here. Can you hear me? I can hear you, can but you hear I can't me? see you. Where are you? Hello. Can you see me? Hear me? Awesome. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, so my name is Shanitria. I am the creator of Blunt Blonde Mama, which is a lifestyle brand um, that consists of a podcast called Blunt Balloon Mama Podcast. It consists of merch, like t-shirts like this one. First I smoke weed and then I do things. And I am focused on normalizing consuming cannabis by parents and moms, specifically uh, black moms and moms of color. Um, you don't see a lot of that. And we're out here. We smoke weed. We have sex. We do it all, we self care with weed. Um, and it's just really important to represent women and moms in these conversations about cannabis because cannabis is mama's little helper, both in and out of the bedroom. And it's really important that we normalize that. If we can normalize wine moms, we can definitely normalize moms who smoke weed. Um, and that's what I'm out to do with uh, the Blunt Boy Mama platform. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to be here today. Can't wait to talk about sex and weed because it definitely helps me out often <laughs> yeah no kidding and, and i have to say under such stressful times uh you have like my my admiration for having to deal with motherhood and covid and isolation and you're absolutely right about normalizing cannabis use for parents and not see them as some sort of um you know deviant and uh lacking in parental skills and being able to look after the children properly because it that drives me nuts that there's still a stigma like oh cannabis you're a drug user mm -hmm. your parent how dare you so yes uh I, and i love your instagram feed by the way there you go um okay now uh, <laughs> next one is sophie, sophie thank you say <laughs> saint james saint thomas <laughs> Hi, introduce myself. Yeah, put out there for a second. I am Sophie St. Thomas. I am originally from the Caribbean, where I feel very lucky 
that I was raised around a lot of Rastafarian culture where cannabis is a sacrament. It's sacred. So I don't didn't have to do a lot of like the Nancy Reagan deprogramming that I noticed that a lot of my stateside of friends had to do. And I've been in New York for the past 10 years. I've always been pro cannabis in high school and debate team. I was debating for legalization, but it actually, I actually didn't become a regular user until about seven years ago, following a sexual assault when I was prescribed medical marijuana for PTSD. And that was really like the, the birth moment of me realizing how powerful this was to fight PTSD, you know, we've heard a lot about soldiers and vets, and I don't mean to minimize that as well, but sexual assault and rape is so prevalent and how it, can, it really brought my sex life back. And as a very sexual person, that's really important to me. And I'm also a journalist. I write about sex and cannabis, primarily for GQ, Allure, Playboy, and I'm a Scorpio. I'm a journalist. I love to investigate. So this worked for me. I was like, I have to go down this hole and see what else there is. And it turns out there's a million stories to be told, you know, more research coming out every day. And now about seven years later, I still use cannabis, thankfully through therapy and through medicine. I don't really have the same PTSD symptoms I used to, but I use it to heighten my sexual experience, to be more intimate with my partner. Um, echoing Lagandra Strandra, I'm queer. I'm a big part of the LGBT community in New York City, and that heritage is very, very important to me. And now I'm very grateful to say I'm the author of two books on cannabis. One that is called Finding Your Higher Self, and then a follow-up just on, about CBD, the little book of CB for self-care. And my goal with those books was to bridge the gap between medical and recreational, because what I used in my own healing, it's like, where, where, where am I not, no longer a medical patient when I'm using this because it feels good, when like my PTSD nightmares stop? And do I have to quantify my use, you know, with a medical card to kind of prove that I'm not like just a lazy stoner? And I think it's really important that regardless of people have a medical card that they can use the beneficial aspects of cannabis to enhance their everyday life and their sex life. And I can't wait to speak with everyone here. I'm very grateful to be here. Wow, how, how do I follow up to, to that amount of unbelievable warriorness that, uh, and I just made up a word just for you. Um, wow, um, uh, there's so much to unpack what you just said. And, and I, you know, I, um, I don't wanna say, I'm so sorry that you had to like go through what you had to go through, but I am, I just thought we, you know, segue into your PS, PSD, and um, I'm just curious, are you trending more towards like a THC kind of product or a CBD product that helps you? Um, because cannabis is such an individual thing. I don't want to say, oh, you must have, you know, taken this one drug. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious as to how, what, what are you taking to, to uh, assist? It is very, very individualized, and I'm sure it'll come up. A lot of people on the panel were involved um, in the creation of an intimacy journal, you know, with Foria and Goldleaf that helps people kind of cater exactly to find out what works for them in the bedroom. Personally, I am a THC girl. I tolerate it very well. You know, in the beginning when things were really tough, like I needed that. I needed that to knock out the nightmares. I needed that to stop the flashbacks, you know. If you're really high and you're telling a story and you forget something that can be kind of annoying but if you are having a flashback the same mechanism stops it and helps you be present in the moment so i love my thc i love high dose edibles i wouldn't recommend you know but i also have seven years as a medical patient on me um i i don't think there's any wrong way to consume i think that's up for everyone to explore and learn themselves yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and I'm just curious, do you use any topicals in the bedroom or is that like a, um, a, a product in that you've ever used? I, I do, I, my favorite is suppositories. Actually, I have um, used vaginal suppositories for menstrual cramps and um, all cards on the table. I love anal sex, love, love, love it. And I find anal suppositories work really well as kind of step one in the prep work to get, to get that ready, get the lubrication going. So I can't, I can't recommend supp suppositories enough. And, um, you know, Kiana can probably say plenty more about that, but I, um, I love Foria's products. 
Okay, Kiana, there you go. That's that's your segue right there. Tell us about those suppositories, lady. <laughs> so we actually have four different suppositories, but really we have two kind of varieties. We have our THC line, which is available only in dispensaries in California and Colorado. Um, and then we have our CBD broad spectrum suppositories. And we really developed two different varieties of suppositories. One is for pain mitigation. So um, in our CBD line, it's called relief. In our THC line, it's called relief. And that's really for endometriosis, chronic pelvic pain. Um, if someone has like severe vulvodynia or vaginismus or like incredibly excruciatingly painful sex, those are very high dose um, THC or CBD. And then we have our intimacy suppositories, which um, are amazing and what we've found because CBD is this, not just CBD, actually cannabinoids in general tend to be uh, very vasodilating. They help relax muscle tension. It allows for all of this blood flow to reach the pelvis in ways that um, might be restricted due to muscle tension or inflammation. And so the suppositories, especially when used vaginally or rectally, um, they allow those deep inner pelvic muscles to relax. So whether you're talking vaginal or anal sex, um, as soon as those cannabinoids absorb, they allow for this kind of receptive softening, opening and um, arousing of the tissues around them. So we find that they're really wonderful on their own or in combination with different type of um, cannabinoid products that are, are meant for arousal. Wow. I am so excited about the future. Oh, speaking of pussies. Oh. <laughs> nice one, Zoe. Uh, Laganja, I want I want you to chime in here. Um, with well, first off, I need to try the suppository immediately. That I know. Well, you know. Years. <laughs> what? How am I just now hearing of this? I'm living. I, 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 I too, this is, I was like, really? I, like I've heard of vaginal, but I never heard of anal. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. And, um, you know, for me, I guess in the bedroom, obviously THC, I'm, I loved what Sophie said. Let me see if I could remember. Um, I tolerate THC very well. So, uh, I like a, uh, THC lube. Absolutely. Totally love that. But I also just love being um, stoned while having sex. I just, that's, that's just the way for me. I mean, I will be honest with you. I medicate throughout the day regularly. So I'm pretty much always, you know, um, using cannabis. So for me, when it comes to sex, it just made sense. I feel like cannabis allows my body to relax. And as someone who is also engaging in anal sex, specifically the bottoming position, um, yeah, you have to be able to relax to be able to enjoy that. So uh, cannabis helps me do that. It helps me relax, you know, like I said, in sexual encounters, but also just in life and in, in my everyday usage, which is why I continue to use it in and out of the bedroom. Oh, yeah. Well, absolutely. I mean, it's basically from farm to table to bedroom now. Down. Yeah of how, how I deal with my own cannabis in my life since <laughs> I have well, my I'm all about integrating it in, in more ways. And I, I, like I said, for me, sex just totally makes sense. I, it was never even like a, a question. It was like, once I discovered the plant and realized that it was medicinal, I was like, Oh, right. Like, let's do everything on this now. You know, like that really, because my first lens, when I was introduced to cannabis, it was for creativity. My girlfriend in high school, she was like, let's go and, you know, smoke and then we'll come back and choreograph. And so I really was introduced to it in a way of, you know, creativity. Yes, it was recreational, but it still was even at that time in a medicinal lane. So as I've, you know, developed my love and my knowledge, uh, yeah, I find it in the bedroom to be amazing. So I can't wait to try that out, Kiana. I'm excited. Oh, I, I already have my Saturday night planned already. <laughs> you have 15 minutes to get over here. <laughs> okay, Shanitra, hello. Are you still around? Um, she's, I don't see her camera on. I was going to ask, um, well, I'll just throw the panel out there. Um, what I find um, as I'm getting older, I am turning more to cannabis just because uh, drinking's too got too much calories in it, you know. And I already I don't want to deal with like the development of the COVID spread, shall we say? Uh, <laughs> so, um, 
what I find um, uh, most of my friends uh, uh, are indulging in some pretty adventurous play in the bedroom, but still, you know, there's a bit of uh, a stigma, uh, like introducing cannabis to the bedroom to a partner that's never done it before. You've never really done it before. How, how do you, explain cannabis in your personal life to somebody that's, you know, last time they saw it was like when, uh, you know, Cheech and Chong were playing at the drive-in. Who would like to take up that? Sophie? Yeah, I, I have a lot of personal experience with this. Um, another part of growing up in the Caribbean was that in, in middle school, I was very familiar with rum, like already. Uh, and I have alcoholism on both sides of my family. And by the time I was 25, I was in New York. I, it was just a hot mess. And then especially after the assault happened, like, and so I quit drinking because I'm thankful that I think like my ambition out, outweighs that. And I have seen where it can go from grandparents to et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so at first I was like a little bit nervous about getting into medical marijuana, you know, I was like, oh, will this, you know, cause problems for me? And it was completely the opposite. I think number one, we don't talk enough about what great a tool of harm reduction it is. Like cannabis will not make you act messy. It will not make you say things you regret. It will not give you a hangover. It will not make you violent. There's actually studies that show that couples that use cannabis together have lower rates of violence. And, you know, I can only speak for myself. And I'm really happy to see that in the past few years, the recovery community has become more welcoming of cannabis, especially medical marijuana patients. I don't think alcohol is bad. I think it's bad for my body. But I think this speaks again to how the way I see substances, I think of it as like couture compared to off the rack, you know, to prescribe like, well, this is what the government says. So we all have to do this. And this is how we get high and relax is just such, such bullshit. And, you know, if partners are a dick about it, maybe they're not who you should be fucking. But also the, <laughs> I found that the best evidence on this, whether it's someone who's, who's new to it, who maybe grew up with like a different upbringing than I did, who has a lot of stereotypes get out of their head about a cannabis user is just like seeing is believing, you know, I have, I have never been with anyone who has seen me use cannabis, who has said that they feel like they had a problem that I wasn't present. And it's, it's, it's been such a lifesaver that I could just go on forever about it. Um, I'll go ahead and pass the mic to anyone else who wants to speak about this. Anyone else? Anyone else like to attest to that? I mean, um, definitely, I know for, for my own sex life, um, after a certain age, you know, you go from being a mango to being like a corn husk and, you know, you're like, what? So, it, you know, plus chin hair. So, you know, thanks. <laughs> so um, I want my mango back. You know, I want that back. And uh, I do find that uh, cannabis and the lubes that are out there, it's like, Hi, I have a constructive way to spend my afternoon now. Um, so, uh, okay, Shanitria, are you back? Are you back? Can I, I think I see something happening. I, I was just curious because, you know, you're the mom and the crew and I just want to know uh, how you do it and how you bring in that into the bedroom with the kids' house. Hello? No. Oh, I'm sorry. What was the question? Oh, I was just wondering um, how we, uh, okay. what was the question? Uh, I can see you. Um, yes. I was just wondering, um, since you're the mom in the group, um, how um, you would help mothers kind of introduce cannabis if their partner and, the, and like they're a newbie. I know that, you know, you are uh, definitely an advocate for moms and cannabis use, but how would you help moms kind of like tiptoe around that if they're like new to this. Yeah, I mean, it can be intimidating, like trying to smoke anything before. You might not even get high, so that's not the way to go. I would recommend starting with like a topical or an edible, you know, start slow and small and then kind of go add on more, but topicals are the best best way in like a nice intimacy 
or massage oil that has CBD or even THC in it. That's going to help, you know, relax the muscles and relax the body um, and help to really set the mood. So, you know, a lot of people think that like weed and sex means smoking and that's totally not the case. Um, I love using topicals in the bedroom, uh, a nice weed lube uh, definitely helps get me nice and slippery down there. Um, and a lot of people do use lube in the bedroom, right? So why not get a lube that's infused with cannabis, especially for you ladies. Like I know that I'm breastfeeding right now and, um, breastfeeding moms. I, I mean, I hate to break it to you guys. If you're a woman and you never had kids before, but when you start breastfeeding kind of dries up down there, <laughs> but if you get a nice, lube um and one with cannabis especially then it really helps to kind of bring back that sensation in the area um gets you a little bit more slippery like i said which makes it a lot more fun where you start playing down there um and just in general i think it's like a really like very low barrier of entry into cannabis and sex and then you can kind of build up to adding smoking you know dabs or take a smoking a joint afterwards or something like that. But I would say start with topical. It's so easy. Yes. And I can't, and I can't believe you're breastfeeding through a pandemic. Like, Oh my God, girl, seriously. Uh, there should be like a metal hanging around somewhere that we can <laughs> forward it to you. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, you know, where is it? <laughs> Oh my God. I can't even, I can't even. Um, yeah. So um, I, the next one was, uh, the, there was a question here that was talking about if you're using a suppository, is your partner, assuming you're not using a condom, uh, you know, this is a shout out to safe sex out there. I know it's happening, you know, um, is your partner going to absorb some of the THC, uh, when you are participating in penetrational sex of, of any, you know, way when, after you've used a suppository, basically the question is, is my partner going to get, uh, absorbed THC through that? Do you want me to take that one? Yeah. If you could. So the vaginal, the, the way that the vagina is made, it's all vaginal mucosa, meaning it's like super absorbent. It's the same tissue as your mouth. And it's really, really um, like a sponge. So it'll take in all the cannabinoids and it'll go straight into your bloodstream and absorbs really well into your body. For a person with a penis, it is not necessarily the same. There's not a lot of um, mucous membranes on the penis. There's a little bit under the foreskin if someone still has a foreskin, um, but it doesn't absorb in the same way. So there might be some absorption, but it's probably much less. Um, so they won't feel the impact as much, but there's still the risk that if they're worried about drug tests or anything like that, they may still absorb it. Really? Like very low risk, but I never like to give anyone the, you know, yes, there's always the risk of that if they're going to use it. So. Okay. I'm going to file that one and put it in my back pocket. It's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Like get any rectally, like that's a very absorptive area. And with sex, obviously it's messy. Things get everywhere. Some like if someone's using an uh, arousal oil or suppository with THC in it, and then, you know, has oral sex with somebody and gets in the mouth, like that's another time where you can get THC um, ingested. So yes. Wow. No, now that is some info right there, right there. Um, now I was just wondering, and this can be open to anyone. Um, do you think that it's important to have a cannabis journal? Like, um, because cannabis is such an individually absorbed, uh, situation and for newbies who are just kind of like, okay, I want to try this in the bedroom now, but I know of plenty of like green out situations where, you know, people have popped a, a gummy in their mouth and then, you know, had to lie in a fetal position on the bathroom floor for 12 hours. So, um, and you know, when, when you hear what they did, it's like, I took one gummy and nothing happened. So then five minutes later, I ate another one and then another one, another one. And then now I never want to try them again. So, um, I know that, uh, here in Canada, we're always talking about going low and slow, low and slow, but 
We all, um, we know about terpenes and the difference, the interplay between cannabinoids like uh, THC and terpenes and how that interplays all with us individually. How would you suggest people start like a diary or something so that they know that they're on the right kind of train on the track, so to speak? Who would like to take that one? La ganja. Sure. So I actually have something that's like perfect just for this exact thing you're talking about. It's called the Intimacy Journal. It's by Gold Leaf. And uh, it's incredible. It's super interactive. And it allows you to do exactly what you're talking about. Jot down how different products work, how they, you know, influenced your sexual activity for the better, for the worse, didn't work at all. Um, and it has different charts and different, different kinds of exercises that you can work through and explore. Um, and also, like I said, lots of space for you to journal and, and leave exactly, you know, what you're doing. So, um, you know, I, I agree with you, you know, as someone who smokes all the time at this point, mama, I'm like, what's new? Let's try it. I mean, there's no writing it down. I'm ready to get down and do it. But um, I, I remember when I was first getting into this field and you know, really starting to explore. I, I wish that I had had a journal like the Intimacy Journal from Goldleaf because it really definitely it allows you to give an in-depth um, exposition, I guess, of yourself and really and then really write down, you know, how you feel. And I think if I had had something like that in the beginning, it would have been more helpful. And it also would have been a way to talk to my partner, you know, to have this journal, to have something to reference, to have a way that we could both talk about it. Because I think a lot of times, especially for me in the beginning, as coming from Texas, talking about sex was not easy. I did not grow up in a household where sex was openly talked about. No one walked me through sex. I mean, especially as a gay person. Uh, so this was all things I had to discover on my own. And I think a lot of people have had that kind of trajectory. So having something like a journal, you know, it allows you a, a common ground and a place to, I think, function with yourself and with a partner. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, as I was saying before, women are uh are really notorious for keeping their mouth shut when it comes to yeah do i really enjoy that not really and then just putting through putting up with it because you know put up to get along you know and, yeah, and i can't imagine i'm a bossy bottom i don't let that happen mama <laughs> i'm in control i'm very submissive but baby no you're not running this <laughs> Yes. There's ways of dealing with uh, noisy bottoms. Yes. I love it. I love Not it, Mama. Even. I know all about it, trust. <laughs> <laughs> we have plenty in common. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, you know, um, I, I, I got to throw this out to the ladies because um, let's, let's talk about vaginas for a second here. Um, cannabis is definitely a flower for the flower. And, um, what, what I find a real challenge, um, and I know that, um, uh, maybe I'm just the only one that's here that's kind of like going through a bit of a change, um, talking about, uh, sex and satisfaction, uh, when it comes to uh, what's happening in the bedroom and dealing with effects from menopause and perimenopause. We're talking about uh, some pain issues, some dryness issues, and women are not going to talk about it, but I know that they're suffering. So how do you think that we would be able to encourage our sisters to walk into a dispensary and try and talk to a pimply teenager going, yeah, um, mango, mango, <laughs> help. So like how, if you're not gonna go to a dispensary, where do you go? And who do you trust? I can pop in here. I'm sure other people have ideas on this too. Um, you're right, the benefits of cannabis and cannabinoids for anyone in peri or going through menopause or even postmenopausal is huge because essentially as estrogen declines, um, the tissue kind of suppleness of the vagina can be really impacted. So there's less lubrication often, um, there's more likely pain, sometimes there's muscular atrophy, sometimes there's a loss of libido, like there's all sorts of stuff that when we're finally at this age where we know our bodies really well, 
a whole new set of um, challenging circumstances can happen. So uh, at Foria, we're really trying to lead with education so that people can come in knowing what products they want. So they don't have to like ask the pimply <laughs> bud tender who really doesn't know anything about menopause, what they should use. So they can go in knowing what to look for, what's gonna work for them. And that is totally normal and it's fair. It, like it's so universal. Anybody going through that really um, experiences it. And it's really about unshaming and normalizing the changes that our bodies go through throughout the whole life cycles, because like Shanitria uh, mentioned, even when you're breastfeeding, when you have prolactin, that hormone suppresses the production of estrogen, which puts you in a kind of similar type of um, menopausal state where there's less lubrication. It can hurt a little bit. Um, so cannabinoids are a fantastic option for that. Amazing. Amazing. Cause I know, um, you know, women, they talk about sex nonstop when they're 21 and then it goes into radio silence after 35 and it's like, wow. And I know that there's just so many emotional issues involved with, and, uh, Shanitria, I'm sure that you, uh, can relate to this is like when you're dealing with relationship plus children, plus breastfeeding, um, I, I like, mama's helper it's like uh, it must be uh two crutches for me i can't even i can't even understand how you do with it oh my goodness i mean i mean absolutely it's definitely i mean i feel like every woman like the moment you get home from the hospital after you've given birth to your baby she be like welcome home congrats on the baby here's a joint because you absolutely need it. Um, and just so many ways, with mood regulation, with your hormones and everything going crazy, but also with sex drive, right? A lot of women do not want to be touched after they give birth to a baby, they're breastfeeding. Um, but if you consume cannabis, which I do, it does help to kind of lower those inhibitions a little bit and helps you kind of get back in touch with the woman. And you like so often you'll get caught up in that mom role and you forget that like you're a woman like these kids got here because you had sex and hopefully you liked it um and so definitely want to get back to that place of being in touch with your body again getting touched getting your body touched and caressed and stroked and and all those ways and sometimes as a mom you're thinking about laundry you're thinking about did I put the blanket on the baby? Did I leave the fan on? Is the window open? You know, you're thinking about all these things and, and you're not in the moment. So even if you if you lubed up just fine, great, but maybe you can't turn your brain off and cannabis can help you with that and just get in the moment and be present with your partner so that you can connect. And I often find that so many women have trouble just turning off their brain and connecting in that moment. You know, whoever whoever you're having fun with between those sheets, like be present for that person, receive that pleasure because your body deserves it and, and hopefully give a little bit too and, and have a good time. Um, and weed's gonna, weed helps me get there. Um, so I just, I feel like if you're not smoking weed, if you're not using cannabis, anything in the bedroom as a mom, like you're not, are you coming? You have to be, <laughs> like you need to be able to orgasm and cannabis is gonna get you there, you know? So, um, I'm here for like, ladies, you got to get it, get it <laughs> before, during and after cannabis needs to be at all. It needs to be in the foreplay. It needs to be during the act. And then you need to, when you finish, you need to smoke a joint and go to sleep. Like that it needs to be present in every act and every part of your sex life. Oh, uh, you don't have to convince me. My Especially now that winter's coming. I mean, I'm a single person, so um, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with loneliness and also isolation. <laughs> but um, according to uh, my inbox, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting a blizzard of uh, genitalia pictures that is like, oh, it must be cold weather now because everyone's looking to have a bit of a nest for a few months while it snows here. <laughs> so, but, you know, when we're talking about self-care, um, you know, th those of us who are uh, living alone and in isolation, um, you know, let's talk masturbation. I mean, let's, let's, let's face it. Uh, 
we need a helping hands and a helping hand, you know, and um, I'm just wondering, like, you know, self-care is out there. And let's get a little bit more pro masturbation as far as I'm concerned, because uh, what's the worst that can happen at this point? Harry palms. Well, well, whatever. I got a razor. Uh, uh, you know, they're already after my chin. So what's my palms, right? <laughs> Uh, I, can, I can go for a second. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, we've kind of touched upon the question, like, where do I start? Where do I begin? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is still, we all know, leave zero, zero, zero fatal overdoses today on cannabis. Like, I've been there, but really, I don't mean to minimize it. Like, the worst thing that's going to happen to you is that you're going to get too high. You're going to feel anxious and paranoid for a few hours, but you're going to be okay. Like, you're really going to be okay. But, you know if you add another person into that possibility, especially if it's a newer partner, like that can definitely, definitely make it worse. So I really encourage people and they're like, where do I'm, I start? I like, we'll start, you know, with 2.5 milligrams of an edible or five milligrams of an edible or half of a joint or a little bit of a vaporizer or just, you know, some lube and just masturbate. Like, you know, just by yourself. You don't have to worry about saying something wrong or like clamping up and not being able to say anything and become comfortable, learn how it affects your orgasm. You know, if you have an intimacy journal or anything, write it down. And that will make it a lot easier when you do decide to have stone sex with a partner to tell them what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And I think you'll feel feel confident and not even to mention that like masturbation is just fun. It is self care. I, I, I do not think it should stop when people couple. I'm, I'm moving in with my partner on November 1st and I like grabbed him and I was like, you must still jerk off once we live together, you have to like, <laughs> so we all should masturbate. But I think when you're looking to explore stoned sex, um, you know, sex by yourself counts. It's a great place to start and fool around and learn what, what works and what doesn't work. Oh, absolutely. Um, when I uh, transitioned from a corporate career into the cannabis world, I spent the first two months of my uh, post corporate career uh, making my own infused oils with uh, my homegrown, smearing it all over my body and wasting afternoons. And uh, you know what? I, I uh, <laughs> maybe not everybody has the privilege of Chen transitioning to a new career that way, but I'm telling you, Thank goodness my Wee Vibe, I don't know if you're familiar with that toy, but my Wee Vibe was rechargeable because otherwise it would have been an, uh, an absolute ecological disaster uh, <laughs> with the amount of batteries I'd be using. And I, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, Sophie, you are um, like raised a really good point is that you're not gonna know what great stone sex is until you've gotten stoned and had sex with yourself. Because how am I going to expect anyone to play with me, uh, like, psychically? Like, you think that someone, your partner is just going to automatically know all of the bells and whistles? No. Uh, and, and, like, intimacy uh, is such an important part of uh, a, 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 a functioning, not a functioning, a satisfying sex life. Um, and, you know, intimacy and self-care, I think, are the buzzwords going through uh, another uh, COVID-filled winter. Yay. <laughs> now, um, oh, uh, magic wand. Uh, I'm sorry, I just uh, saw one of the comments up here going, I love my magic wand. Yes. Speaking of magic wands, blood ganja. <laughs> <laughs> I well, know. I've been masturbating like six times a day, Mary. I mean, literally, I so at some points my dick is like so raw. She's like, just stop, just stop all this action, Mama. I need to chill. But uh, I really do. I believe masturbation is self care, and like there are people who like you know save it up and like don't masturbate. And I'm like, what? I think that is just wild. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, though. I love it. If that's you out there and you're saving it up. God bless you, sweetheart, because I can't save it for 20 minutes. I mean, I just, I just can't. I'm bored. I'm at home. I'm single. I'm gorgeous. And I'm stoned. And I've got five minutes until the next gig. And here we go. I mean, it just happens. I, 
I feel like, um, you know, because I am such a sexually free person and I, I love talking about it and being about it. And, you know, like I said, I really want to break down barriers as an artist. In fact, not to plug myself, although <laughs> I'm going to plug myself. My next song that's coming out on November 30th is, is called Daddy. And it's all about sex and, um, and cannabis. So, you know, I, I'm really trying to use my art in that way to show people uh, like you said, not just by living and living, but by walking and talking, doing both, all the actions. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think uh, masturbation's great. You should do it. And absolutely, I love me some THC lube. It's amazing. <laughs> well, I I, there was just a, a comment here from uh, Matt Baker saying that 21 orgasms a month is healthy for the prostate. So there you go. You have permission to, uh, you know, well, even if I didn't gorge, I'm still going to do it. So, you know, there it is. <laughs> well, you know, and I've been reading a lot about uh, the chemical process of the female orgasm and and how THC actually there's a brain center, uh, which is the CB1 uh, receptors, which um, are important for for developing good memories. So when you were talking about P, uh, PS. PST. Oh, sorry, um, my acronyms too many. PST. Yes, that one. <laughs> um, the uh, THC helps formulate good memories. So, uh, like, I can see why uh, somebody who is suffering from from something that uh, is traumatic uh, would would definitely give me that THC and let me hit it up, hit it up. Um, oh, I see Jill. Uh, we're, we're probably coming towards the end, even though it's, I'm sad. I want to talk more. Sex and cannabis are my favorite. I know. I could talk about this all day, all night. I mean, this is fantastic. Um, we do have one question in the Q&A box here. Okay. Um, addressed to Kiana. Um, what is the onset time for the flora loop? So the Foria, we have two different arousal oils and then we have a CBD lube and the arousal oils take, we, we say give it about 15 to 20 minutes to absorb. You'll probably feel kind of instant lubrication. Obviously the base is um, organic MCT oil in both of them. So you'll feel like slippery and wet right away, which gives some people the feeling of like, oh, I'm ready to go. But really the benefit is when the cannabinoids and the other plants absorb into your your system and get the blood network going to all of your erectile tissue. So massage it in 15 minutes. If you want to feel like really extraordinarily good. Um, that's kind of our, our baseline. <laughs> Great. Does anyone else have any questions Put them in the chat or in the Q and a or Linda, if you have, or Laura, if you have a, a, a few uh, more questions you want to ask, I, you know, we've got a few more minutes. Oh, that's awesome. Um, well, I was just, um, okay, let's, let's talk cultivars um, and sexual wins. So uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I am a big fan of the Cindy 99, um, which I don't know about you guys, but uh, it sparks up a lot of, uh, neurons so to speak and uh i am quite voracious so it's just like get over here and be prepared to have a sore back in the morning so um uh, <laughs> um so i was just wondering like um who in the panels got their favorite cultivar and how it helped them with the sexual win and you can feel free to brag <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? Who's good? Who's up for bragging? Nobody. Um, <laughs> I'm so, I don't have a cultivar. What? And I want to go ahead and say I think part of that reason is because I do live in New York City where it's still outlawed. And so I, I love edibles, but I think I've used edibles even more so because I don't want my landlord to smell like I'm scared on the subway. I'm going to get, you know, if I'm caught with like my medical card and my like pills, that'll be very different than if I have butt on me and that fucking sucks, but it's just, it's just the reality. Um, I love sex parties. 
I love group sex. Me and my partner are known to rent a hotel room and have a shared girlfriend over for the night. And I love edibles for the reason some people don't like them because they just last so damn long. You know, one, I can travel with them, whether I'm taking the subway, you know, they just fit on my purse and they're very, very discreet. But I know my right dosage, you know, thanks to a lot of trial and error, mostly trial, not, not, not a whole lot of error. I've been pretty lucky, but, and then I'm, I'm good for six hours, a six hour fuck fest. And I have a nice, wonderful, full body high. So I just wanted to plug a little edible love in there. And now I will pass the mic to someone else. Anyone, anyone? Oh, uh, cultivar is another word for strain, by the way. Uh, I know that there was, um, I'm sorry for using jargon. You know, that's one of the things that I really want to push is to, to have some sort of standardized language that we can all talk to each other in. Like that is uh, one of the things I'd really love to push. Um, Sunitra, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, um, as far as strains go, I really love wedding cake uh, before sex. It's so good. Um, it's a hybrid, but I find it to be more indica leaning. So it really relaxes my body, but I find somehow, somehow it gets me horny er than I already am. And it also gets my partner horny. So any strain that gets us both to the same point at the same time is like a true gym because I'm usually like one person's in the mood and the other person's like, uh, and you got to kind of, you know, caress them and shake your booty on them or whatever you got to do to like get them in the mood. But if you can both smoke the same strain and meat, oh my gosh, it's like, talk about a fuck fest. That's what it really becomes like a true. So I mean, but that's part of the fun of finding the right strain. Like wedding cake works for me, but for someone else, it may not work. Like it works for me and my partner. So it's being able to sit down with your partner buy, you know, three or four different strains, smoke it together and say, let's see what happens. You know, either you're going to end up in bed having sex together, you're going to end up in bed falling asleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, either way, you're, fall you're, you're in bed. As long as yeah. <laughs> the end result is you guys in bed, I call that a win. <laughs> exactly. It's a win either way. I love it. Well, uh, definitely, um, I, I've heard of wedding cake. I haven't had it myself, um, but I can certainly add that to my menu uh, because I've apparently I got some suppositories to buy too. So I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I better order in some pizza because I don't feel like cooking. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, somebody's got a question here talking about edible recommendations. Um, uh, I'm, 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 I'm not really an edible person. So, um, I'm Sophie, take it away, man. You're the one or, or anyone really. I'll plug an edible. Okay, do it. Uh, you should check out Fruit Slabs, specifically their collaboration with me. Um, these are vegan, gluten-free, kosher certified uh, fruit leathers. So they're all organic. Uh, the flavor that we collabed with is called Pride Passion. It is a passion fruit with a hint of lemon and lime and of course mango, which is the base of most of their fruit leathers. Uh, it's only 10 milligrams per dosage. So it's really easy to, you know, uh, use throughout your day and, and see how much you like or don't like. And because it is a healthy edible, uh, you don't have to feel guilty about it. It's not some big piece of chocolate or a brownie or anything like that. And I also want to mention another favorite edible company of mine, Sonder Time. It is a lesbian run business. They are amazing. So shout out to the queers and cannabis out there doing it. And they have just released their space crystals. So these are the first ever patented cannabis pop rocks that are that are compliant because I have seen other pop rocks, but these are compliant. So uh, I'm very happy for these women, incredible products. Theirs is also 10 milligrams per package. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more fun, uh, they're amazing too. But uh, yay, yay for edibles. I love them. I have tried Laganja's fruit slabs and can second them. They're wonderful, 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 wonderful and delicious. Wow. Great. So if I can jump in here, we've come to the end of our event, which has been fabulous. And what I'm seeing in the chat room, it's, it's everyone's favorite one we've done so far, which is great. 
Um, if you guys could hang on for five more minutes, I would love to show Laganja Stranja's video again because I, we had a sound problem prior at the beginning. So I'd love to share that again. Um, but, but you're so sweet. That, we, don't, we don't need to do that. Make them go to my YouTube. I need the views. <laughs> okay, that too, everybody. <laughs> if you can't, if you can't stay on and watch it, go to his YouTube channel. Yes. Um, again, thank you all for joining us. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Um, our next event, our 420 networking mixers on November 5th, and our next educational series, which will be on social equity in the cannabis industry, will be on November 17th. Don't forget to vote. And hugs and tokes, everybody. I'm Gucci. I'm Pete. I can tour from my head to my feet. You're retired, expired, have a seat. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm lit, I'm wild, damn free. Got my freak on like a Miss C. You ain't got nothing on me. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me.